it's funny, you know? It's like, it's like my goal isn't to, uh, <laughs> it's like opposite. It's not to grow and get hundreds of thousands of people. No, actually, well, to be honest, I don't have a goal, like honestly, but I'm just saying, it's, it's funny when I think about it. I'm not trying to grow this channel. You know what I'm trying to do? I'm trying to weed out, I'm trying to concentrate it. This, I think this is why <clears throat> these, I love making these kind of videos. It gives me energy, you know? If I had to make manifestation videos and <clears throat> hello my beautiful un unicorn videos, like that would suck. Unless I'm making fun of it, I can do that. <clears throat> but you get my point? It's like, I want to bring these things up to see what level of consciousness out there can assimilate these, these pointings. And so it's, it's fun. It's fun when you're not attached to things. Then life is fun. I'm seriously just doing my time here. <clears throat> I don't know. I've got a couple decades left on the planet and I'm out. So it's like, it's like whatever. I don't want anything. So you can't like own me. Oh, look at this girl. Uh, yeah, she's nice, but you know, not for me. Here, suitcase, million dollars. I'll burn it, you know? It's like that. So we're talking about uh, talking about what we're talking about. <laughs> God will bless. It's not about the level of action on, on some level. It is, and it's not. Like you know, like again, there's all these angles, but I'm touching on a specific angle right now. So because I can't make a 24-hour video and try to touch on all the different angles. And even 24 hours is nothing. Just, the deeper you go, the more stuff there is to look at. But what I'm trying to say is the point. The point isn't so much what somebody's doing on an external level. That's superficial. The real thing is the level of, you can say, devotion or surrender to the universe or to God. God in form or the formless, doesn't matter. That recognition that there's some supreme consciousness that's running everything. This is a real spiritual practice. You keep concentrating on that. This is what it is. You find your own way to do that. So let's let's do a story because they, yeah, they're fun, more fun. I used to say funner when I was a kid, they're funner. I just, I, you know, I'd make my own language up. I'm like, why do I got to listen to Webster? I said, I said, <laughs> I said something once in a video and uh, somebody said, that's not a word. I said, says, says who? Why, well, I can't make my words. All right. There was, uh, there was your spiritual unicorn, holy person. And then there was more like <clears throat> attic style, asura for those who are Hindi. You know what a surah is. They live like under the ground, like deep. And the angels live in the heaven. They're, they belong to a different evolutionary kingdom. It's not human kingdom. It's more, uh, it's a different evolutionary uh, kingdom. Gnomes and fairies and angels and asuras, okay? So the holy person, he goes to the Shiva statue every day. He worships Shiva. Oh, I like you, Shiva. Wow, Shiva. Then, the Asura also goes. And the Asura is pissed off at Shiva, though. He has some health trouble. His relationships are messed up. People don't like him. He looks funny. People laugh. Ah, you're funny. So see, the Asura is like... He's pissed off at Shiva. So he goes every day, too. He also worships Shiva. But most don't think so. He brings a stick and he beats him. He beats the statue of Shiva every day see there it doesn't matter the weather there was once it was uh, in India you have monsoons it's no joke type uh, rains so the holy spiritual unicorn he didn't go in worship Shiva that day because he's like uh, I don't want to go out there and then he justifies no Shiva wants me to stay here and, okay but the, the Asura he still went because he wants to beat him. He needs, he's like, Shiva needs to get beat. 
And so there were a bunch of situations like that. There, there would be some extenuating external circumstance in the holy spiritual unicorn, he didn't go. The Sora would go. The Sora had backbone, had inner power. And so finally, after, uh, I don't know how long it took, five, 10 years or something, <clears throat> the holy person's still going, but still the character didn't change. Still the same character. You know, he, his spirituality really didn't uh, flower. Maybe in his mind it did. Thinks he's really spiritual because he's doing, he's doing his uh, bhakti practice. But there's no deep. <clears throat> it wasn't coming from the core. Whereas the asura, at that magic moment, somehow he felt. He felt a power and energy that wasn't his. He's like, whoa, this is clear. This is Shiva. And then Shiva said, okay, I'm here. <clears throat> Doesn't have to say it verbally, it can be intuitively. What would you like? What's your wish? Like, what do you, <clears throat> what do you want me to do? And the Sora said, uh, he said, look, I want this special power. I want to be able, to, when I touch somebody's head, I want them to be able to disappear. This is what I want. Shiva said, all right. You earned it. I mean, you, you're tapas. It, it's like I'm powerless in front of you. I have to give you this. I have to. This is the laws of the game. You see? It's hot out there. I'm going to go this way. Uh, so, Shiva, boom, gave him the blessing. So, the source said, <laughs> he'd say something I would say. He's like, but how do I know it worked? I need to try it on somebody because maybe it won't work. Maybe I'll go and try to do that to some badass, and then he'll just shoot me. You know, I need to know it works. So uh, the source says, listen, let me try it on you first. All right, I'm going to try it on you, and then we know if it works. <clears throat> Shiva didn't like that, right? So he started running because he saw, like, this guy's serious. And the source starts chasing him. So then the angels... They go to, you can say Vishnu. They're like, what are we going to do? <clears throat> this uh, <laughs> Asura is chasing Shiva around. And uh, Shiva gave him this power, and he's going to use it on him. So then Vishnu incarnates as this beautiful woman who's tailor-made for the Asura. So then the woman shows up. The Asura stopped. You see? I should make a, a light, a light video, light, okay? It doesn't even matter. Girls will still get mad. But a light, because I'm pointing to something, how God, something like girls are the Antichrist. I remember that, that, <laughs> that saying from the movie Tombstone. Go see that if you guys haven't seen that with Val Kil Kilmer. That's his best movie because that's what he told that girl. Now, what I mean when I say it, I'm going to finish the story, but this, this is also important, you know. God uses girls to get things done. If a guy's not doing something that's like out of alignment with the destiny, he'll send a girl so you can get it done. Now, that can, that can be positive or negative because we're in duality, so that's all I'll say about that. I wonder how that video would do. Are girls the Antichrist? I don't know. I've been known to push the envelope, but I try to, you know, keep some kind of uh, diplomacy going. But the, long, the longer I do these videos, yeah, that diplomacy starts decreasing. Oh, we're doing, we're doing a satsang Sunday the 24th. I don't know when you're going to get this video, so if the 24th has passed, it's passed. All right, so the girl shows up, and the Sora sees her, and he stops. And then uh, they start talking. She's hitting them with that female energy. You see, that's what they do. It's very, uh, it's very nice. And usually they can get what they want. They really put it on the guy. So then uh, <clears throat> he forgot all about his power. He forgot about Shiva, everything. He just, he enjoyed this connection, you know. So then he's like, um, he's like, listen, I want to, I want to, do you know how to dance? I want to like start dance. I, I want to dance, you know. Because he thinks like the girls like that. So he wants to dance. She says, yeah, I know how to dance. And so they go 
but he's like, can you teach me? Because I don't, I don't know. I also don't know. You know, I used to, I'd go to the club. I just, I'd stand against the wall. Like I'd just be posted, you know, cool. Yeah. Cause I didn't know how to dance. So they go, <clears throat> maybe they're in their room. I don't think they went to a club. And then uh, she's teaching them some moves, how to dance. Then, now remember, remember, Vishnu sent, no, no, this is Vishnu. The, the higher <clears throat> cosmic programmers sent this girl for a specific reason, because he was like, gonna hurt Shiva. <laughs> and so then the girl was teaching him the dance moves. And then she said, okay, for this one, put your hand on your head. And he's, he's, he's following her, right? He forgets everything. Puts a hand on his head, he disappeared. He used his own power to make himself disappear without knowing it. The girl made him do it. So then the, <clears throat> the angels, they're, everybody's celebrating now. The, they removed the problem. Yeah, until the next one starts. So this is the play of creation in life. Man. <clears throat> you, can't, you can't escape it. There's always going to be, that's what I say, like people want to, they're waiting for this world to be utopia. It's never going to happen. There's always going to be wars. Always. This is the game. This is the play. When you leave this body, you'll see it was all play. Self-realization means you start to see that now more and more and more and more. But you never see it 100%. Not as long as you're in this body. This is, this is a trap to start thinking. Again, <clears throat> the trap to identify with your knowledge or your evolution, your spiritual evolution. You know how many people I've met? Not many. Or people I've, <clears throat> I've, I've known. Maybe not personally, but I've known throughout you know, the 30 years of me really studying, uh, studying this stuff. I've seen, I've seen a lot of gurus. I've known a few personally who declare they're going to die at a certain time, 90 or 100. And they end up dying way, way sooner. Or they end up in the hospital or something, some unknown <coughs> situation or disease. They weren't expecting that. Why? Why? It's like, this is the trap of too much, when too many people revere you and, and are devoted to you, if you start ide identifying with that. You can start to get high on your own supply of this spiritual juice. You start thinking that like, you, whoa, I am God. You forget that God is running this whole show and doing everything. He's doing everything. This so-called knowledge and awakening you have is because God gave it to you. God's playing through you. If you do any miracles, God's doing it. See? So then they end up <clears throat> they end up dead or in the hospital or something. Then they're surprised. Like, whoa, what the hell happened? And then you know what happens? This is next level. <laughs> I had a teacher like this in India too. No matter what happened to him, he would justify. There was no humility. That's the point. There was no humility. He... Um, what happened once? He drank, because in India they like bomb, and they make it make the marijuana in milk, especially in Sh Shivarachi day. And they, they drink this stuff. And he wasn't used to it, but he drank it, drank too much. And he didn't even know like what the hell, like super strong. He was falling down everywhere, you couldn't talk to him. And so then, you know, somebody took him home and he chilled. And you know what he said? Like the next day or, or maybe longer, he needed to recover. Two days later, he's like, wow, this was such a good experience. This was so divine. His, see? His mind. Now, he did, wasn't saying that in the moment. He wanted that shit to end. It was miserable. But the mind, it, it's, it's, this is the trap when you think that you're a teacher or you're here to disseminate like information. And if too many people start to revere you. It's a trap. <laughs> and so then you can't, it's like the humility dries up. It just dries up. And then it, you, you, you have this arrogant energeticness about you, you know, because you're used to being worshiped and you can't like let any, <clears throat> any life situation, you can't express how it really makes you feel. You'll just pretend like, no, this is great. This is, you see? Those who 
have more heart space and consciousness, who aren't just blindly following somebody, where you can actually see these things, you can recognize that. This, this, there is always something to improve on. This game is strong that we're playing. It's always something to kind of rub out. So you get to where you're like, okay, it's cool. Okay. Something surrenders to the fact that you're never going to be perfect. And you get rid of this whole, these concepts, I'm awakened or how much percent, all that. You see how all that's a trap? All right, I'm getting hot. So I'll talk to you guys uh, soon. I'm doing a satsang March 24th. I don't know. It might have passed already. I'll see you.